We are here in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Greetings from St. Gregory the Great Catholic Church in Plantation, Florida, where today with the church around the world we are celebrating the fifth Sunday of Easter. We're more than halfway through the Easter season now, and we're journeying towards Pentecost and beyond. Uh, today, our Lord in Holy Scripture gives us some very specific and blunt teaching. Uh, if we are to follow him and find life and find life in abundance, it has everything to do with embracing him who is the way, the truth, and the life. And we are to do the works that he does. We are to act in his name to build the kingdom of God among us in the spirit of the risen Christ. To prepare ourselves for what we're about to do today, I invite you now to enter into these mysteries by calling to mind your need for God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the Twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. 
The proposal was acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Philip, Procurus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large number of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Exalt you just in the Lord, Grace from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten-stringed lyre chant his praises. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And, like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith. But for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into this wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
The Lord be with you and with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you may also be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I must tell you, it is not easy to navigate our way through the difficulties of life. The burdens at times seem abundant. Indeed, the crosses are heavy. Some of the difficulties of life are self-inflicted wounds. Many are the evidence of an imperfect, flawed, and broken world ever in need of the action and grace of God. Left to our own devices, we often spiral into despair, if not finding ourselves destined to fail. Though we try, we simply can't control everything. We're not ultimately in control of so much. Yet this weekend, we have a very clear exhortation by Jesus himself as to how to bridge this chasm between the difficulties of life and what we long to be in Christ. He tells us, do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in me. Today's Liturgy of the Word invites us to not neglect the importance of the Word of God, They challenge us to place our trust in the Lord and his mercies. We are likewise asked to ground our lives in the cornerstone, which is Christ. So how are we doing with taking personal responsibility of all of that? We are given lofty goals today, the navigational program to address the difficulties of life. When I was a little boy, Sister Mary Elizabeth and Mrs. Fenning taught me about our treasured Catholic faith. They prepared me and taught me to be prepared for Holy Communion. They also prepared me for confirmation. Back in those days, the bishop would come around to the parishes and confirm the entire grade school at once. 
and I happened to be on the younger end of the student body at the time I was confirmed, I was merely in the third grade. As if it weren't hard enough for my little seven-year-old mind to get itself wrapped around the mystery of the Eucharist at my first Holy Communion, which I received in May of my second grade year, I suddenly had to attempt to comprehend the sevenfold gifts of the Holy Spirit at age eight when I was in the third grade, a mere few months after uh, I had received First Holy Communion. Well, my teachers taught me that we had to choose a confirmation name of a saint with whom we could relate, who would be a special inspiration to us as we journeyed through our life of faith. At some point, I remember coming across the name of a saint who was pretty close to the Lord. Uh, he had his share of doubts and questions, and I thought that this would mean I too could be close to the Lord, even though I had my own doubts and questions. Uh, can you guess the name that I chose? Thomas, of course. And I always smile when I hear gospel passages featuring St. Thomas as we heard today. Seeking understanding, and perplexed with the mystery of Jesus' words, he asks, how can we know the way, Lord? And Jesus reveals the key to taking responsibility for our spiritual lives. Our Lord says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Do the works that I do. Perhaps this is the measuring stick against which we can evaluate the quality of our lived lives of faith, grounding ourselves in Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, and doing his works. Some years ago, I heard a wonderful story that I'd like to incorporate into this message today. It's the story of a man in North Florida who had the weekly custom of going to a local Dunkin' Donuts store to buy some donuts for his men's Bible study gathering at the nearby church. On this particular morning, there was a teenage girl who worked at the donut shop Apparently, she inadvertently messed up the order, and without thinking, the man snapped at her, demeaning her work ethic and her character, something like, how can it be so hard to get a simple donut order correct these days? Or how hard is it to find quality employees anymore? He barely noticed the girl's lips beginning to quiver, or the tear that began to trickle down the cheek of the young woman who was six months pregnant. As he impatiently sped away in his car on his way to church that morning, he began to have some pangs of conscience, and he realized that he probably offered a terrible impression of his church and of his character. He just hoped that she did not notice the parish bumper sticker on the back of his car which said, follow me to church, won't you? So when he got to his Bible study class, he told the men there about his mistake and said that he had decided to go the next week to give the young girl a baby gift. It was an act of repentance to be sure, but also the realization that this young pregnant teenager might be frightened out of her mind trying to figure out how to provide for this new life growing within her. He didn't want to just feel his repentance, he wanted to act on it. So he invited the other men to join him if they wanted. And the next week, 46 cars lined up at the teenager's drive-in window at Dunkin' Donuts, each of them bearing a baby gift for a young girl that they did not know except for her need. One by one, the cars filed by, emptying their treasures like the magi at the feet of another young maiden and child. Those men threw her the only baby shower that she would receive. Once again, her lips began to tremble and tears flowed down her cheeks, but this time they were tears of overwhelming and surprising joy. I don't know if anyone in that car caravan actually bought any donuts that morning, but as the last car pulled away, she saw the bumper sticker which said, follow me to church, won't you? And so she did. It wasn't her custom to go to church. She didn't care what kind of church it was, but she found out where it was because all she knew is that it was a church that threw a baby shower for a frightened, unwed mother struggling to make ends meet. And that was enough for her to want to know more. 
Friends, today I believe the scriptures are inviting us to take responsibility for the quality of our spiritual lives, to follow in the ways of Christ, to understand the truth of Christ, and to do the works of Christ. We may have our questions, we may have our doubts, we may even have our inconsistencies in living out the Christian life, but in Christ we have a way out of the maze of despair and hopelessness. We all need to activate the holy potential that comes forth when we follow Jesus, the Lord of mercies, the way, the truth, and the life. One of the Eastern Fathers, St. Gregory of Nyssa, once said that holiness happens in life when we are in the right disposition before God. So what's the quality of your disposition before God? With the apostles in today's gospel, who were unsettled and perplexed at the thought of Jesus leaving them, their discipleship learning curve was still needing formation, and Jesus taught them that day. We, too, need the clarity of Jesus' words as guideposts for our wobbling Christian lives. Maybe we should associate our own discomforts and sufferings and inconveniences in relationship to those endured by Christ and all the saints who have come before us. The question of St. Thomas the Apostle can be our question to the Lord today as well. How can we know the way in life? How can we truly follow you, Lord? And Jesus' blunt answer applies to us today just as surely as it did to St. Thomas the Apostle long ago. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Do the works that I do. How spiritually valuable and profitable it would be in the light of what we are all now experiencing to strive to be more fully like the life of Christ. Men and women of authenticity, service, generosity, bearing our sufferings in light of our faith, being socially responsible, anchoring our lives in Christ. Gregory of Nyssa also once said that when a person takes himself to be more than he is, God can do nothing. We all need to give God space to work in our lives so that God's mercy can be free-flowing in us. This is why our own Saint Gregory the Great had a pearl of wisdom for our spiritual journey as well. He says, be the first to admit your sin and you shall be justified. It is characteristic of the holy person that their painful trials do not make them lose their concern for the well-being of others. Rather, they are like gifted doctors who are themselves stricken and lie ill. They suffer wounds themselves but bring others the medicine that restores health. In other words, be self-aware and do something about it. Respond to those around you with charity and in a Christ-like way that demonstrates virtue, that you're following the Lord's clarion calling to do the works that he does. Gregory the Great goes on, ask God to reveal to you your poverty, the weakness of your soul, what you're really afraid of, and ask God to take it away, that which paralyzes you in spirit. Yes, taking responsibility for our spiritual lives means allowing Jesus to answer our questions, allowing him to be the way we go, the truth we embrace, the life we lead. Christ indeed should be our compass for our living. And that is why we are again united in prayer and worshipful praise today to once again be saturated with these efficacious and inspiring teachings, the very word of God for the life of the world. Pope Pius XI once said that we should always turn to Christ for true peace. In 1925, he's quoted as saying that the evil present in the world was due to the fact that the majority of people had thrust Jesus Christ and his holy law out of their lives. The way that individual followers of Christ live their lives in relationship to one another is directly related to this truth. No wonder the famous St. Augustine once said in his timeless confessio, without thee, O Lord, I am except the guide to my own destruction. We need 
the anchoring that comes from a life grounded in Christ. How do we take responsibility for our spiritual lives? How do we pay for all the good that God has given us? Following the example of the Master, doing the works of Christ, living our lives with generosity toward others before thinking about ourselves? Those who seek me shall find me, says the Lord in Proverbs chapter 8. Let's seek him. Let's find him. Let's make him the grounding principle of our lives, consciously, deliberately choosing to live in Christ the way, the truth, and the life. The task ahead of us is never as great as the power behind us, and this is precisely why the faith that we cultivate in Christ is a great motivator as we find our proper place on the journey of Christian discipleship. God is at work in us. Are we doing our part? One final pearl of saintly wisdom as I conclude. Maria Stein, the great Jewish convert to Catholicism who later become a, became a Carmelite nun, now known as St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, she gives us yet another insight into this mystery of Christian living about the way that we are to live and the outlook to have as we live the Christian life. She said, and I quote, whatever did not fit in my plan did lie within the plan of God. I have an ever deeper and firmer belief that nothing is merely an accident in life when seen in the light of God, that my whole life down to the smallest details has been marked out for me in the plan of divine providence and has a completely coherent meaning in God's all-seeing eyes. And so I am beginning to rejoice in the light of glory wherein this meaning will be unveiled to me. Such wisdom is really only the fruit of prayer and a lifetime of searching for the truth. We abandon ourselves to divine providence and consciously choose to live his way, seeing things as he would see them, putting on his spiritual eyeglasses to interpret the landscape of our lives. In St. Paul's letter to the Colossians, we hear an inspired lesson as we embark upon this quest. Let the message of Christ in all its richness find a home in you. Teach each other and advise each other in all wisdom. With gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms and hymns and inspired songs to God, and never say or do anything except in the name of the Lord Jesus. No, it's not easy to navigate our way through difficult times, but in Christ we have the answer. Do not let your hearts be troubled, he says. Have faith in God and faith in me. And so may we place our hopes in the Lord of mercies, in Christ the cornerstone of our life, the way, the truth, and the life. Laudato sia Jesu Cristo. Let's profess the faith that unites us now as God's holy people. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As a people called by God, a chosen race, a royal priesthood, let us present our needs to him with confidence. 
for all of us baptized into Christ's church and the royal priesthood. May the Lord continue to increase our faith for the sake of his kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in positions of authority, may God's grace enable them to lead with integrity, protecting life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For any who are struggling to believe and those whose faith is weak, may Christ speak to their troubled hearts and give them hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have been welcomed into the church through Easter sacraments, may the Holy Spirit continue to form them as living stones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, may he who has prepared a place for them welcome them to the splendor of their heavenly home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this Mother's Day, we also pray for all of those who are mothers and grandmothers and expectant mothers. We pray for blessing upon them and for the reward of their goodness and that they may always enjoy the reverence and devotion and affection of their children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you know our needs before we ask. Please hear and answer our prayers this day according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Gregory the Great, St. Thomas the Apostle, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, we pray. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from their former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Just before the final blessing, I'd like to offer a special prayer of blessing for all of the mothers and grandmothers uh, and expectant mothers who um, have cooperated with God in bringing life into the world. And so I invite all of the mothers who are watching via this transmission to uh, close your eyes and bow your heads and let me say this prayer of blessing for you. Loving God as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you give life and care for your church. Bless all mothers as we celebrate this day in their honor. May they be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor and appreciate them with a spirit of profound respect and devotion. May the example of Mary, mother of Jesus, inspire them to live their vocation as Christian mothers and call their children to faith. Guide and protect them in challenging times and help them to continue to trust in you all the days of their life. Reward them for their goodness. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you now, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our liturgy has ended. We go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <clears throat>